This one's kind of bad, but there wasn't a lot of options. I think this will probably get the job done, right? Well, this... What is this? There's a switch. You said go get a switch. It's N No, it's... I said go get a network switch. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Well, but what did you do to deserve a switching? Mm. Why are you put, why did you? Yeah. In the second part of our 099 networking series, we're going to talk about your switch and why you're going to want to upgrade your switch, even though you might not think you need to. The first reason is to improve your network speed. Not all traffic moves through the modem. Some examples of internal traffic include Plex and other internal streaming, video surveillance like a security camera, Windows file sharing SMB, and of course, network attached storage. An ass! They're amazing! You can do so much cool stuff with one and uh, here's how you get started, you just Second reason you want to upgrade your switch, more support for more devices and future-proofing your device purchases so that you always know that you have a switch that can handle all of the network bandwidth that you're going to add to it. The average number of devices keeps increasing. Everybody's got a phone and a tablet and a laptop and another laptop and a work laptop. The switch is going to let you run a bunch of devices way better. At least a good switch. Also, if you're using your own switch, you won't be stuck with a monthly rental price from your local ISP. If all that sounds good to you, you're ready to get started with your installation. But first, you need to think about what you need. First off is number of ports. This one is the easy one to figure out. You count the number of wired network devices that you have in your home. Note that some devices may use more than one port for even more speed. And don't forget to plan for the future. You may need more ports later. Second is speed. If you have a newer device, a newer motherboard, or newer laptop with a fast network interface device, it might actually be faster than the integrated switch that your ISP can give you which means that you're never gonna get the potential speed from that device. With a good switch, you never have to think about that. Third, think about your form factor. This may seem a little bit silly, but make sure you get a size that's adequate for your space. Not all of us think giant racks are really, really cool. But we absolutely do. If you, for example, bought one of the wireless access points we talked about in the last video, it's likely you're gonna need power over ethernet. That is power that goes through your network cable. Now some switches will have that built in, some of them will have it only on certain ports, some won't have it and you'll have to have an injector. That's something you need to figure out before you make your purchase. Look online, maybe the level one forums, talk about pros and cons of each different model. You know, Ingenious that I've covered before. I kind of like Ingenious, I like the hardware. I like the, the, the CNO, I think it's a Taiwanese hardware company. I like that a lot. Ubiquity is also really popular on the level one forums. I've, I've got a lot of mileage with Ubiquity gear as well. Uh, Netgear, Dell, it's business class stuff though that you want to focus on, the business class stuff. The consumer gear is usually not very good. And consumer grade stuff, new, used, it doesn't really matter. But you can get business class stuff used on eBay often for less than new consumer grade gear. So that's something worth checking out. Uh, switches also tend to hold up really well. Um, switches second hand can be a great choice. There's a ton of older 10 gigabit switches you can get for just pennies. Uh, on eBay and other places. Although you gotta be a little careful with those. They don't necessarily do two and a half and five gig, but they will do one and 10 gig. So if you wanna go, go nuts. But that's not really 099. You can also get cast off and upgrade switches at your office. <laughs> go to your local IT person and say, thinking about deploying a network switch at home. Do you have any e-waste that I can have? The answer may shock you. One trick you can do with switches is you can actually daisy chain them. So if you need more connectivity, in a certain place that your switch can't handle, you can add a second switch and add more ports. So you got your new switch, now it's time to install it. Well, lucky for you, that's one of the easiest installations you're likely to ever do. You just plug it in. That's right, and some switches might have a control panel or a cloud portion that you're gonna need to set up, but for the most part, plug that in. And once you've plugged it in, all you gotta do is test. Uh, you'll wanna test your speeds by moving files between computers or NAS. Be sure all devices use the same speed NIC. So something like an older laptop versus say your brand new blazing fast desktop are gonna have slightly different transfer speeds. Be sure to think about that when you're testing. The switch on your network ideally is a workhorse that's just doing its job out of sight, out of mind. Something you never really have to think about. 
it is mostly plug and play unless you want to get fancy with other stuff it's not really at uh, you know at an 099 level if you run into any issues double check that you've plugged everything in again and test again you will definitely notice having a switch for your connections especially versus a wireless connection if you have a nas or you're moving a lot of files between your machines or or anything like that if you have a lot of wireless cameras and you make them wired by plugging them into a switch you'll notice how much better your wireless network is because it's not crowded with all of the traffic from your wireless cameras which are probably continuously transmitting or doing you know whatever else that, that they do don't settle for wireless connections if you can possibly avoid it especially for desktop computers where the speed difference is not insignificant Generally, your switch helps with your wired connections, and, and that's why it's so important. For our next episode of the 099 series, we will be covering your router, which is unfortunately the slightly most complicated section, and you're going to have to have a very uncomfortable conversation with your ISP. But that's okay. We'll walk you through it. Bye!